Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. And I know a lot of you are here because you like my reusable film camera content. So let's give you all what you want and talk about another one in this video. And this is definitely not because of how my non-plastic reusable film camera related content is doing lately. <laughs> Actually, in early February, Vivian, who is the marketing director over at Reto Project, contacted me through Instagram asking if I would be interested in showcasing their cameras in some of my videos. Not gonna lie, at first I thought it was a scam, but it wasn't. And after some stalking, I learned that the Reto Project is in fact legit, and the cameras that they're asking me to show did seem interesting. So I said why not, sure, send them my way. And just a few weeks after, these cameras came in the mail. So they sent me two Reto Ultra Wide and Slim Film Cameras, or Reto UWS in short. I chose the yellow and blue ones because they match my condo's aesthetics. And these are the ones that I'm going to be talking about in this video, so if you're interested, then stick around. But they also sent me this Reto 3D camera, which I haven't tested yet, because I don't have any friends to take portraits of. Just kidding, I do. I'm just a very busy person. It looks very nice though. I love the look of it. But let's be clear, Reto is not paying me to advertise these cameras, so whatever I say in this video is my own personal opinion about my experience using these cameras. Alright, so let's talk about what the Reto Ultra Wide and Slim camera is. If you've been following along my videos or just interested in reusable plastic cameras that take 35mm film, then you've probably come across cameras like the Agfa Photo Film Camera, Ilford Sprite 35-2, Double Film Show, Kodak M35 or their newer Kodak Ultra F9, and the Vibe Film Camera, just to name a few. See, those are pretty much all the same, and I will make a video where I will talk about this more, but they pretty much have the same build, the same 31 or 32, F8 or F9 plastic lens, and basically the same usage experience overall. The difference is mostly aesthetic. So along comes the Reto UWS, and I must say that these are probably the most different plastic cameras that I've seen in a while. First of all, they have a 22mm lens, which is a lot wider than the typical 30-ish millimeter lenses of other reusable film cameras. What this means is that you can fit a lot more of the scene in your photos. And there are pros and cons to this, like I find composing is more challenging with such a wide focal length, and it's easier to catch your fingers on frame. <laughs> but ultimately, I think that this is a fresh and welcomed addition to the current reusable cameras in the market. Second of which, it is tiny. Here it is in comparison with Ilford Sprite 35-2. And here it is in comparison with my Yashica MF1. As you can see, it is smaller, slimmer, and overall more pocketable. It's also just around 69 grams, which is nice. But to be fair, the other plastic cameras are just around 100 grams, which is already pretty light. But yeah, these are very cute cameras, which is part of the reason why I really wanted to get my hands on them in the first place. Oh, one major difference that the Reto UWS has um, from other reusable film cameras is that it lacks a built-in flash. So if you like using flash to get that specific look in your film photos, then this is probably not the film camera for you. This also limits the use of this camera to pretty much daytime and outdoors. You could use it in cloudy days if you use a high-speed ISO film, but as you can see here, it really shines on a bright sunny day. <laughs> anyway, the build quality is pretty solid. It has a nice matte, or satin, finish that is very pleasant to touch. And overall, it's comparable to the build qualities of other reusable film cameras I own. 
loading it with film is also very similar to other reusable film cameras. To load the camera with film, open the film door by pulling down on this lock at the back of the camera. Next, push the film rewind crank down and load the 35mm film of your choice in the film chamber. I recommend using any 400 ISO speed film and above, but you can use 200 ISO films during bright sunny days. Push the film rewind crank back in and you can rotate it a bit if it's not sitting flushed in the camera. Next, use the film advance wheel to rotate the film take-up spool until you can see the slit. Insert the film leader into the slit and make sure that the second sprocket hole latches into this tooth on the take-up spool. Rotate the film advance wheel more until you have some good tension on the film. I also like to align the sprocket holes with these gear teeth to ensure that the film latches on well before I close the film door. After closing the film door, use the film advance wheel and press the shutter button several times to prepare for your first photo. To take a photo, turn the film advance wheel until it stops and compose your shot using the viewfinder and then press the shutter button to take a photo. Once you're finished shooting a roll of film, you can unload the camera by first pressing on the film rewind button at the bottom of the camera, and then rotating the film rewind crank clockwise to rewind the film back into its canister. Once you no longer feel any tension when cranking the film rewind crank, pull the film rewind crank out and open the film door to take your film out for processing. Okay, so let's look at some sample photos. I use a roll of Kodak Ultramax 400 for the color photos and a roll of Kodak Tri-X 400 for the black and white ones. As you can see, you can get a lot more of a scene in your photos when using this camera. This means that it's great for times when you really want to showcase the environment in your scene, like when traveling and such. Or say, when you just really want an iconic building in your shot. Sometimes, this can be detrimental because you end up with unnecessary stuff in your frame but with careful consideration, I think you can get some pretty cool photos using this camera. Like, I hope you like the photos that I am showing you right now. Can you take a selfie with it? Mmm, <laughs> yes. But the camera focuses from 1 meter to infinity, so if you have long ass tentacle arms like me, then I guess it works. Otherwise, it'll be a little bit blurry. <laughs> I would like to emphasize though that this is still a reusable camera with a plastic lens, so the photos will be soft. As you can see from this photo, the center of the image has decent sharpness, but the corners look smeared and no amount of adding sharpness in post will save that. Also, try to avoid shooting with the sun directly in front of you because the flares aren't pretty. But yeah, as long as you get good scans of your film and are mostly posting them online on social media, then the quality of the images you get from this camera is pretty acceptable in my opinion. Besides, like I always say, these images will have character and flaws that will get you that vintage quote unquote film look without the need for digital filters and such. I should say though that I did edit these photos in post, like adding sharpness and brightness and some leveling here and there, because I believe that editing is a tool you should use as an artist to really control how you want your images to look like. 
Although my edits are minimal because I do like to preserve things like the character of the film stock and the lens that I used. Overall, I do think that the Reto Ultrawide and Slim Camera is fun to use. It gives an experience that is quite different from my other reusable film cameras, which really adds to its charm. So yeah, if you like reusable film cameras and a wide focal length, then you should definitely check this camera out over at RetroProject.com. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't yet. I will see you all in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>